Ja, am Singen. Alright. Welcome back, everybody, to yet another episode of Real Swing the Drumming Show, where we talk about jazz drumming and other general drum related topics. Um, today, we cover something, we want to cover something that uh, we may have covered a little bit already, uh, but something a little bit more specific, which is um, uh, my approach to uh, choosing the best kind of drumsticks uh, for playing jazz. Now, Here's the thing, um, a lot of people associate uh, playing jazz with a little bit of a lighter touch, right? You want to be able to do kind of light, nimbly things when you're playing, uh, you know, jazz drums in party. Jazz. Always thinking about like light, nimble movement, uh, which is not 100% true, but it is definitely a part of playing jazz, is uh, getting that, that lighter touch. But the thing is that a lot of people associate this lighter touch sometimes with lighter sticks. So, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, I'm gonna play jazz, I'm gonna use my 7 A's, I'm gonna pick up my 7 A sticks, I can't use my 2 B's, uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean that you sound like that. It's just that I've heard that before. <laughs> anyway, so um, give you a bit of history. Back when I first started playing drums, I was kind of obsessed with bigger and bigger sticks. Like I would start off with a, a typical 5A pair of sticks and then I would see, you know, those um, drum catalogs and magazines that had like longer sticks. And I would get obsessed with them. Like I wanted the bigger, longer sticks because for some reason, I think it's based on like my own perception of my grip and where I hold the sticks. Drummers in videos that I watched looked as if their sticks were huge and long and fat and you know, uh, like for instance, the first time I saw Jojo Mayer play, uh, his sticks looked absolutely enormous in his hands. I don't know if he's, he's got small hands or if he just, you know, some drummers just hold the stick like way back here so that it looks like really long in their hands. Whereas I hold my stick like somewhere up there, I've got a little bit of butt sticking out at the back of my hand. I don't know if that's the case, but I got obsessed with like trying to get bigger and heavier and bigger and heavier sticks. So I used to have these big, huge, fat sticks when I played. Uh, then after a while, I, you know, I swapped over to some 7As and played 5As, 5Bs. I've played all sorts of different kinds of sticks, man. Um, and uh, you kind of get used to the different weights. I even had like, you know, some of these, I had like the, the, the Weckle sticks at one point as well. This is the last surviving stick from the Dave Weckle series that I had because it was a larger, longer, heavier version, I thought, a little bit, of the, uh, the, the uh, Steve Gadd sticks. Uh, now, personally, I currently, I love the feel of the Gad sticks. Uh, not just because, you know, of the, the weight. I mean, they are lighter sticks generally. They're closer to 7As uh, than anything. But it's because it's got a very gentle taper, which I like. Uh, there are some sticks which have a very sharp taper. I mean, the Weckl sticks have a, a little bit of a sharper taper. They taper off, you know, a little bit near the end, whereas the Gad sticks taper off a little bit sooner. Um... Sometimes I have sticks that barely even taper at all, you know, they just like, yeah, so the necks here are still really fat. There's some sticks that taper off and the necks are really, really thin. Uh, but I like the Gad sticks partially also because I like the way that the tips sound. The barrel tips, they have really nice precision kind of a sound on my ride cymbals, which I absolutely love. <laughs> When it comes to the argument of associating like lighter touch with lighter sticks, um, that is definitely a very false assumption. Because you can have light sticks and bash the crap out of them, 
Or you can have heavier sticks and actually play really light. Um, the touch shouldn't really be associated with the weight. Right, I'll give you an example. I've got myself here. These are my beauties, my prime real estate. I don't know why I said that. This is such a stupid phrase to use. These are my, um, from a legacy from my uh, schooling days. These are the Promark uh, Japanese Shirakashi Oak Millennium 2 Rob Carson Insane Practice Sticks. All right. Uh, you know, Rob, Rob Carson was uh, my... Uh, technique instructor at a musician institute i believe he's still there uh but he was like a world snare drum champion three times over or something like that and he designed these like sticks uh with promark to 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 you know they, they have the weight uh and girth of marching sticks but without like the size of them so they're, they're pretty much closer to the length of a regular stick um a little bit shorter as well but the, these guys are like heavy as all heck because they're oak. Oak sticks are generally on the heavier side. But they're heavy as all heck. But even with sticks like these, and I don't recommend them, I don't recommend you take your marching sticks and start playing swing. You might hurt yourself. But you should still be able to achieve this lighter, nimbler touch. <laughs> to do them with you know heavy ass sticks like this as well if, if, even if i flip them around now i'm using the butt end of the stick right butt end of the sticks even heavier right but you sh still should be able to achieve the exact same thing Weight isn't really the thing that affects the way in which you play um, in terms of like how heavy or light your touch is, all right? It's all really about the level of control that you can have. And you can use any kind of stick, right? Um, any kind of stick, even mismatched sticks. And uh, these are about, you have wacko sticks are about a little 5A, 5, a little bit over 5A. <laughs> actually still feel really good they're old sticks they're a little bit longer i think yeah they're just a tiny little bit longer than the gad sticks but they feel really really good so yeah pick up my my recommendation is always pick up a whole bunch of sticks from a whole you know series of weight categories and and play them all right and just use like oak sticks maple sticks hickory sticks whatever the heck you want use all sorts of lengths and sizes and try and do everything you want to find a stick that you can play everything with, right? It really doesn't matter, right? Pick a stick and just work with it. The ones that you do want to avoid, like if you're playing jazz and you want to avoid, is you want to avoid sticks that have pretty much lost their tip entirely. Because once the tip goes, the definition on the sound really goes. And uh, you also want to avoid sometimes, uh, the thing that I hate the most when it comes to sticks uh, is, is when you get some of these cheaper, like weird brand sticks, um, sometimes I don't know what the heck they're made of, but they're actually springy. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but I can bend the stick. <laughs> they're not very rigid. So when you hit them on the snare drum, they have this weird artificial bounce to them that is just... Ugh, it feels weird. It feels like I'm using one of those chopsticks I used to fry mihun to play in the snare. <laughs> And bounce right. Yeah, you know, you 
want to avoid crappy sticks definitely, but you don't have to pick a lighter stick necessarily to play a lighter touch. And vice versa, you don't have to pick a heavier stick if you want to play a little bit of a heavier touch. You still should be able to do as smashy, bangy, hit crashy, whatever collection of words you would like to use to describe really hard hitting stuff with the lighter sticks, right? Steve Gas sticks. <laughs> And I better stop before my neighbors kill me. Of course, the ultimate gold standard of making sure you're picking the right stick is if your stick can make you feel good while you're doing this.